These are my pet goldfish, fastball, shortstop, and slugger. My mom says I sleep like an elephant seal because I'm such a deep sleeper. She can practically sit on me and I won't wake up. Wow, that lion's teeth look awfully big. It's a good thing too since he's a carnivore and needs strong, sharp teeth to eat meat. Scorpions are really awesome. Look at how they glow when you shine the right kind of light on them. Check out that water snake. If he's really still, he looks like part of the plant. That's called camouflage, and it helps him hide from both his predators and his prey. Someday, maybe we'll go on a field trip to the wild animal park. I want to ride an elephant. Knowing Miss Frizzle, we're more likely to travel up his trunk. My report is on domestic horses, which means horses that are tame. That's a longhorned beetle. There are lots of varieties of these guys, but one thing they all have in common is a huge appetite for wood when they're young. I've always worried about toads. Is it really true if I touched one, I'll get warts? No way, Arnold. But you might get wart hogs. Carlos. I did my report on my hamster, Scruffy. Scruffy is a rodent and is related to mice and rats. But I don't hold that against him. Why have just one pet when you can have a whole farm? These are my ants, and they are amazing to watch. I did my report on my kitten, Mittens. She is a domestic cat, which means she's tame and she's a pet. But she's related to wild cats all over the world. Okay. What pet is always found on the floor? I don't know. What? A car pet. Elementary indeed. Fine detective work. Case closed. Now there's a cat who's really got her paws full. Can you tell how many kittens she has? Life can be pretty hard for an animal when it's not in its right habitat. That's why we need to find those misplaced animals from the wild animal park and put them in the right places. Back to the bus, class. We're headed for adventure. Choose a North American to Lauren Desert. In my old school, we never went to the Sonoran Desert. Well, at least you won't be able to say that about your new school, Phoebe. Back in the Sonoran Desert. When you're hot, you're hot. So go outside again and give it a shot. Meet my buddy, Bobcat. Bobcat for short. His mom didn't name him Bob. He's named that because he's got a short bob tail. The lesser long-nosed bat. In baseball, I've used a long-necked bat, but never one with wings who's got a nose like that. Besides, my bat isn't endangered, and this one is. Meet the tiniest owl in the world who lives in the biggest cactus in the world. Elf owls live in holes in saguaro cacti. Faster than a professional racehorse. It's the black-tailed jackrabbit. A Gila woodpecker pecked a nesting hole in a saguaro cactus. How many nesting holes did the Gila woodpecker peck? Uh, one? Yep, and get this. After she pecks that hole, she won't come back and move in for a whole year. Can you believe it, Ralphie? The spadefoot toad spends ten months out of the year hibernating underground. Whoa, and I thought I slept a lot. Amphibians and Reptiles by Ralphie. Click on a picture if you want to find out about slimy and scaly creatures. What's the difference between an amphibian and a reptile? 
Amphibians, like this frog, have slimy bodies and lay their eggs in the water. Frogs and salamanders need to stay wet because some of them actually breathe through their moist skin. Reptiles, like this lizard, don't need to stay wet. They have scaly skin covering their bodies and the scales help to keep them from drying out. Reptiles, like turtles and lizards, lay their eggs on the land. So do snakes, but some snakes and even some kinds of lizards don't lay eggs at all. Their babies come right out of their mother's bodies just like mammals. Welcome to the number one game show in the animal kingdom. It's Scat Soundtrack, and I'm... Where shall we? North American Swamp! Back once more in the wetlands of the North American Swamp, where you'll find everything to be warm and dumb. <laughs> Here are four new... This one's a mammal, not covered in fur. It travels on four hooves with his herd. These tools will come in handy in your investigation. Make no bones about it. There's more to the world than meets the eye. It's a good thing we're here this time of the year, because in the winter, the Perula warbler wouldn't be here. It migrates to the tropical forests in South and Central America. At my old house, we had a family of white-tailed deer living near our deck. White-tailed deer live lots of places, including most of the U.S. and South America, and parts of Canada. Check out this swamp, the full moon, all that moss hanging down. I want to sketch this place. Could you leave me out of the picture, Tim? I don't want to be reminded that I spent a night eating bugs. That's a muskrat, and it's related to a beaver. It even builds its lodge out of sticks and leaves in the swamp, just like a beaver does. That's a channel catfish. Some people like it deep fried with tartar sauce, but in the swamp where it's alive and swimming, it hunts at night for worms, crayfish, and small fish. Alligators are giant reptiles that spend a lot of time lying along riverbanks in the sun so they can keep themselves warm. Fortunately for their prey, they can't move very fast when they're on the land. Thank goodness for small favors. I bet that snapping turtle has some sharp teeth. The snapping turtle, like all turtles, doesn't have any teeth at all. But its beak is sharp enough to bite through a human hand. This is the report I did on insects. If you want to find out about the world of insects, click on a picture. Butterflies. People like me who don't like bugs make an exception for butterflies. This monarch butterfly is still wrapped up in its pupa stage, waiting to come out. It has spent weeks and weeks metamorphosing from a caterpillar. To metamorphose means to change. And here it comes, a butterfly breaking out of its cocoon. Just another few seconds and... It's a colorful monarch butterfly. And why are butterflies colorful? The colors help them to attract a mate, and they also let predators know that they taste awful. And who would have thought something so pretty could taste so bad? The chorus frog is a tree frog, and they're the first frogs in the swamp to stop hibernating. Help Arnold gobble up those delicious flies by moving him around the pond. All you have to do is click where you want him to go. Uh-oh. Here I go again. To the depth. Tropical rainforest. Party 
to my research, opossums live in the rainforest. Maybe I can see what it's like to hide in an opossum's pocket. Stranger things have happened. The tropical rainforest of Brazil, otherwise known as the Amazon. You <laughs> Opossums are excellent tree climbers, and they can use their prehensile, or grasping tails, to hang upside down, according to my research. Know why jaguars have spotted coats? It camouflages them so they're rarely spotted. Then their prey can't see them till it's too late. The capybara is the biggest rodent in the world, cousin to Arnold's hamster. And big enough to eat Arnold's hamster. Maybe. But just like Scruffy, the capybara is a vegetarian. That taper looks like a pig. Oh, check out that ocelot sitting up in the tree like the queen of the rainforest. Ocelots spend a lot of time up in trees, hiding from predators and trying to catch birds. If Liz could talk, she'd tell you that the ability to smell and taste is what keeps reptiles informed and safe. Re Marsupials by Dorothy Ann. Click kangaroos. Kangaroos. Opossum. The opossum is the only marsupial found in Australia who is also native to North and South America. An opossum's tail is prehensile, which means it can use it to grab onto things. It can even use its tail to hang upside down. If you went to South America, you'd see lots of different kinds of opossums, from big to tiny, like this little murine mouse opossum. Opossums eat fruit and any animals they can catch. Opossum babies stay in their mother's pouch for two months while they grow bigger and stronger. After that, they can go in and out. Sometimes they even take a ride clinging to their mother's back. The baby anaconda. I'm about to be passed from snake to snake in this game of swinging snakes. Keisha's going to need help to get to the other side of the river. That's where you come in. When you click on the snake holding Keisha, it will pass her to the next snake. You have to make sure the next snake is close enough to catch her. Otherwise, Keisha will fall in the water. Don't worry. I can swim. Hey, it's your wet snakeskin, Keisha. And if you need some help along the way, just click on the question mark at the bottom of your screen. Where? Aren't there lions in the African savanna? I knew I should have stayed home today. Back in the savanna again. The place where even the lion's our friend. As long as you don't get too close, of course. Elephants have no natural predators. And you want to know why? Because they are so huge. Nobody but nobody wants to mess with someone the size of an elephant. Zebras are really just like horses with stripes. And just like horses, they have hooves. But instead of whinnying like horses, they bray like donkeys. The cheetah is the world's fastest animal. For short sprints, they can go 70 miles an hour. Because they have long legs, a flexible spine, and a big heart. If this guy was on the freeway, he'd get a speeding ticket. That big kitty sure looks happy. Big kitty? It is a kind of cat, Arnold, but technically, it's a leopard. Kitties eat food from cans. Lep hey, Phoebe, if I sketched the front of an ox, the back of an antelope, and added a horse's tail, what would I wind up with? You get a wildebeest, Tim. Lions are the biggest cats in Africa, and they hunt big herds of animals. I wonder if four kids count as a herd. Warthogs are swine, and like their cousin the pig, they don't have much hair on their bodies. Boy, oh boy, I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but warthogs sure are ugly. Flamingos eat lots of tiny shrimp and algae. 
The oil from the shrimp makes their feathers turn pink. It's a good thing eating grape jelly doesn't make my hair turn purple. Ever been told you've been acting like an animal? Well, the fact is, it's true. Every living creature, from humans to insects, are animals. If you're ever in doubt, here's the test. If it's alive and it's not a plant, it's an animal. Wanda here, reporting on mammals. Just click on the pictures to check it out. Rodents. Lots of small mammals, like this little mouse, are rodents. But some rodents, like this capybara, are huge. So what makes both of them rodents? It's their teeth. Look at them on this beaver. All rodents have big front teeth called incisors. Two on the top and two on the bottom. The curious thing about rodents' teeth is they keep growing and growing and growing. So rodents like this porcupine chew on hard things like nuts and wood to keep their teeth sharp. And it's a good thing they do, because without all that gnawing, their teeth would grow right out of their head. Ready to play again? Great! Animals who have hooves, like horses, are called ungulates. Now see if you can tag these hooved animals. You tagged the hoofed animals. Look at Habitat. Circumpolar Arctic Tundra and Ocean. Check this out. We're headed for the Arctic Tundra. I'm glad I brought my knee down jacket. That and the thrill of the adventure should keep you warm and toasty, Tim. Back again in the Circumpolar Arctic Tundra, better known as Parid. The caribou is a larger and wild version of the domestic reindeer found in Europe. You won't find the domestic reindeer here in the Arctic. The polar bear has a thick, waterproof white coat and a lot of fat on its body to protect it while it swims in icy cold water. It's the biggest of all the bears, over 900 pounds. Wow, I bet he'd give a heck of a bear hug. That fox sure looks tiny. It's tiny, all right, but it's a full-grown arctic fox. They never get much bigger than a house cat. Puffins are similar to penguins, except they can fly. Know why I don't want to be a ring seal? Because polar bears eat them for dinner. We otters may be the smallest mammals in the sea, but we sure know how to have fun. Playing is very important to us sea otters. Incoming! For some animals, hibernation is the only way they can survive the cold of winter. When winter hits, insects aren't active, plants stop growing, and some mammals take a long winter nap so they don't starve. Check out that humongous fish. Now that's what I call fat. Yes, and it's a good thing. Technically, it's called blubber. Six blubbery inches of it all over the walrus's body to keep it nice and warm. Not too many fish can do what the salmon does. They can live in fresh water and salt water. This is a report on fish by me, Keisha. Want to dive in? Just click on a picture. The Coral Reef. Life under the coral reef sometimes looks like you're swimming through a rainbow of colors. It's also a safe place for fish to live, far away from the big, hungry, open water fish like sharks and tuna. Saddleback butterfly fish like these eat the coral polyps that grow on the reefs. When saddleback butterfly fish travel together, it's hard to tell when one fish ends and the next fish begins. This long yellow trumpet fish follows the angelfish wherever it goes and not because they're friends. When angelfish eat coral, it forces the small sea creatures who live in the coral to leave. When these sea creatures scurry out from the coral, the trumpet fish swoops down and grabs them. Hey, 
Himalayan tuna? The Himalayan mountains! Is it just me, or would anyone else rather be going to a baseball game? It's not just you, Ralphie. Here we are once again in the clear, thin air of the Himalayas. Look at that tongue. Giraffes can stick their tongues out really far and curl them up to grab leaves. Miss Frizzle calls that grabbing tongue a prehensile tongue. Giant pandas can only live right here in these bamboo forests because mostly they eat lots of bamboo. Up to more kinds of sheep live in the Himalayan mountains than any other mountains in the world. Look at that little red raccoon. It's so cute. Sorry, Arnold. That's not a raccoon. It's a red panda, cousin to the raccoon and to the giant panda. And don't get too close. It's very shy. Now try to match male animals with female animals. Done. At my old school, we never went on field trips to visit venomous snakes. Fortunately, although the adder is poisonous, it can't kill humans. Phoebe, you sure know how to make my day. To the South Pacific Island Reef. Ah, uh, I can already feel the sea breezes and smell the salt in the air. Ah, the island of the South Pacific. Here, piggy, piggy, piggy. Or is it hoggy, hoggy, hoggy? According to my research, pigs are hogs and hogs are pigs. They're the same thing. Only the babies are always called piglets, never hoglets. I smell a rat, or at least I see a rat. A Norway rat. What in the heck is a rat doing here? All the way from Norway. Many years ago, that rat's ancestors stowed away on boats from Europe that were coming here. When they arrived on the island, they jumped ship. Meet Banana Bill. That's what some people call the toucan because of his big beak. With a bill that big, I think Banana Boat Bill would be even better. Wanda here, reporting on the green sea turtle. This turtle spends most of its time in warm, shallow ocean water and only comes out to lay its eggs in the sand. What's a fish? Most fish swim in water, breathe through gills, have scales, and swim using their fins. And I don't mean the rubber kind Wanda's wearing. My report is on invertebrates. If you want to find out about animals without backbones, click on a picture. No bones about it. This is an orb weaver spider, and this is a ghost crab. What do these two animals have in common? They're both invertebrates, which means they don't have backbones. Invertebrates, like this sea slug, have no bones at all. Invertebrates call many places home, like the starfish who lives in the ocean, or the scorpion with her babies on her back who lives on land. Some invertebrates live both places, like this red hermit crab. Right now, it looks like he just moved into this cozy glass jar. And who said you couldn't live in a glass house? This adaptomatic machine lets you see how different animals have adapted so they can survive under different conditions. To see how cousins of your friends, the cat, dog, rat, and parakeet, have changed to suit their environments, click on one of the animals at the top and drag... Bowser or Spot might have a tough time surviving in the forest, but the gray fox has developed a talent.
talent for climbing trees. It's a skill that helps her find food and escape from predators. What does a cat need to survive in the forest? This jaguar spots come in handy to camouflage her so she's rarely seen by other animals. It helps her blend into the forest and allows her to stalk and catch prey without being seen. Voila! It's a white-footed mouse. She builds her nests in holes which give her shelter from the weather and the many predators that live in the forest. In the forest, we have a bird of a different feather, the sharp-shinned hawk. She has a special long rudder tail that lets her fly quickly through the thick trees. Add to that her amazing eyesight and sharp hearing, which help her to catch the prey she needs to survive. Where shall we? School! Wait! School! We're heading back to school! Finally, my luck is turning! Choose a... North American Sonoran Desert! In my old school, we never went to the Sonoran Desert. Well, at least you won't be able to say that about your new school, Phoebe. Back in the Sonoran Desert. When you're hot, you're hot. So go outside again and give it a shot. Meet my buddy, Bobcat. Bobcat for short. His mom didn't name him Bob. He's named that because he's got a short Bob tail. The lesser long-nosed bat. In baseball, I've used a long-necked bat, but never one with wings who's got a nose like that. Besides, my bat isn't endangered, and this one is. Meet the tiniest owl in the world, who lives in the biggest cactus in the world. Elf owls live in holes in saguaro cacti. Faster than a professional racehorse! It's the black-tailed jackrabbit! A Gila woodpecker pecked a nesting hole in a saguaro cactus. How many nesting holes did the Gila woodpecker peck? Uh, one? Yep, and get this. After she pecks that hole, she won't come back and move in for a whole year. Can you believe it, Ralphie? The spadefoot toad spends ten months out of the year hibernating underground. Whoa, and I thought I slept a lot. Amphibians and reptiles covered in fur, it travels on four hooves with his herd. These tools will come in handy in your investigation. Make no bones about it. There's more to the world than meets the eye. It's a good thing we're here this time of the year. Because in the winter, the Perula warbler wouldn't be here. It migrates to the tropical forests in South and Central America. At my old house, we had a family of white-tailed deer living near our deck. White-tailed deer live lots of places, including most of the U.S. and South America, and parts of Canada. Check out this swamp, the full moon, all that moss hanging down. I want to sketch this place. Could you leave me out of the picture, Tim? I don't want to be reminded that I spent a night eating bugs. That's a muskrat, and it's related to a beaver. It even builds its lodge out of sticks and leaves in the swamp, just like a beaver does. That's a channel catfish. Some people like it deep fried with tartar sauce, but in the swamp where it's alive and swimming, it hunts at night for worms, crayfish, and small fish. Alligators are giant reptiles that spend a lot of time lying along riverbanks in the sun so they can keep themselves warm. Fortunately for their prey, they can't move very fast when they're on the land. Thank goodness for small favors. I bet that snapping turtle has some sharp teeth.
The snapping turtle like These are my pet goldfish, fastball, shortstop, and slugger. My mom says I sleep like an elephant seal because I'm such a deep sleeper. She can practically sit on me and I won't wake up. Wow, that lion's teeth look awfully big. It's a good thing, too, since he's a carnivore and needs strong, sharp teeth to eat meat. Scorpions are really awesome. Look at how they glow when you shine the right kind of light on them. Check out that water snake. If he's really still, he looks like part of the plant. That's called camouflage, and it helps him hide from both his predators and his prey. Someday, maybe we'll go on a field trip to the wild animal park. I want to ride an elephant. Knowing Miss Frizzle, we're more likely to travel up his trunk. My report is on domestic horses, which means horses that are tame. That's a longhorned beetle. There are lots of varieties of these guys, but one thing they all have in common is a huge appetite for wood when they're young. <laughs> I've always worried about toads. Is it really true if I touched one, I'll get warts? No way, Arnold. But you might get wart hogs. Carlos. Piles by Ralphie. Click on a picture if you want to find out about slimy and scaly creatures. What's the difference between an amphibian and a reptile? Amphibians, like this frog, have slimy bodies and lay their eggs in the water. Frogs and salamanders need to stay wet because some of them actually breathe through their moist skin. Reptiles, like this lizard, don't need to stay wet. They have scaly skin covering their bodies and the scales help to keep them from drying out. Reptiles, like turtles and lizards, lay their eggs on the land. So do snakes, but some snakes and even some kinds of lizards don't lay eggs at all. Their babies come right out of their mother's bodies just like mammals. Welcome to the number one game show in the animal kingdom. It's Scat Soundtrack, and I'm... Where shall we? North American Swamp! Back once more in the wetlands of the North American Swamp, where you'll find everything to be warm and damp. <laughs> Here are four new- This one's a mammal, not- I did my report on my hamster, Scruffy. Scruffy is a rodent and is related to mice and rats, but I don't hold that against him. I have just one pet, when you can have a whole farm. These are my ants, and they are amazing to watch. I did my report on my kitten, Mittens. She is a domestic cat, which means she's tame and she's a pet. But she's related to wild cats all over the world. Okay, what pet is always found on the floor? I don't know, what? A car pet. Elementary indeed. Fine detective work. Case closed. <laughs> Now there's a cat who's really got her paws full. Can you tell how many kittens she has? Life can be pretty hard for an animal when it's not in its right habitat. That's why we need to find those misplaced animals from the wild animal park and put them in the right places. Back to the bus first. We're headed for adventure. <laughs> 